Welcome to the Know Before You Go Travel Show, where we share all the latest travel tips, tricks, and insights to make your next vacation the best one yet. So sit back, relax, grab a cocktail, and enjoy the show with Penyak Travel's George Penyak and our senior travel consultant, Janet Penyak. What is up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the No Before You Go Travel Show, and we've got a show for you today. It's your weekly, almost bi-weekly, vacation for your earbuds. Yes. Every time we kick the show off, I look you right in the face, and you're like <laughs> cringing that I'm about to do like the heaviest intro ever. Well, you're so animated, yeah, like with emphasis. If people could see me doing it, I'm like beating my hands like I'm beating on drums. Yeah, he really bam, is. Bam, bam, it's bam, bam. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just excited. I like no, that's doing this. good. This is like one of my favorite parts of the week. There we go. I'm doing the podcast show. And I hope everyone's having a great week out there. It's Monday fun day. And so if you're listening to this on a Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever you're listening to this, I hope you guys are having a great week. And we can't thank you enough for checking us out. Yes. And it's been a crazy week. Well, Already. it's Monday. <laughs> was it yesterday that Van Halen died? No, it wasn't yesterday. I think it was Friday, maybe. In the honor of, of Van Halen, we're going to have to play a little bit. This is my favorite song from them. It's uh, Dreams. Okay. It, actually, it's one of their lesser popular songs, but um, it's actually my favorite song. Of his, so. I didn't know you were such a big fan. I mean, when I was in high school, I listened to Van Halen and, and a lot of the like, 80s and 90s rock bands heavily. I don't listen to them like I used to now, though. But you got to listen to them now. Yeah, Here it comes. this Here sounds goes. nice. There you go. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, that's probably enough. <laughs> okay, yeah. We'll turn it down. Rest in peace, though. Yes, rest in peace. As if 2020 couldn't get any worse. Van Halen dies. Yeah. What's next? I know. The apocalypse is going to be upon us if anything else crazy happens. I think we just need to fast forward like six months from now. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting through the year. But I hope anyways, I hope wherever you are, wherever you're listening to us, we really appreciate it. Um, and we got some shout outs. We've had a lot of listeners checking us out. What you got on the shout out list? I thought you have them. I got the shout out list. Yes, you're right. I have them. Aisha put in a quote request. Thank you so much, Aisha. Caitlin booked a trip to Mexico. Thank you so much. And then Junior Anderson, one of our agent friends in Atlanta, hit us up. He's been traveling everywhere. You can check out his Instagram page. Um, and he's an agent out of the Atlanta area, and he's got a ton of great pictures. And Justin also hit us up. He lives in Maryland. Justin is looking for an overwater bungalow. Yes. Which we have a great podcast on overwater bungalows. Which who does not want an overwater bungalow? That just sounds like a dream right I think now. Everyone right now needs an overwater bungalow. Yes. I mean, it has been crazy. But um, but anyways, we got a good show today. So by the way, thank you guys. Um, we love giving our shout outs. If you ever hit us up, if you want any information on anything we're talking about or a quote or anything. Slide in our DMs, uh, send Jan an email directly, or go to PenyacTravel.com, request a quote, and it comes directly to us, and we love giving the shout-outs, and five-star reviews as well. We give shout-outs for those, too. So yes, anyways, <laughs> we would appreciate that. Absolutely. We love those. Um, so today, I think we just did our last two episodes. We did Universal. We covered Disney, and now I think we definitely got to get everyone up to speed on what's going on in the travel world as far as news goes, wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely. So there's definitely been a lot of news in the last few weeks coming out. Um, One of them being is if you were still holding on to your Thanksgiving cruise or planning on going on, on a cruise in November, they have pretty much canceled all of those now in the U.S. So Royal Caribbean canceled, Carnival canceled. So if you were still thinking that you might be able to go, unfortunately, they have canceled those. But, you know, I do feel like there's a lot of positive news coming out with this and, you know, in talks with the CDC about how they can safely resume cruising. So I, I do feel like it's we're at least closer to it now than we were, say, two months ago. Yeah, so the no sale order has been lifted, but it seems like the cruise companies haven't quite committed to jumping back in yet. Um, so they've kind of backed it up a little bit. At least right now, it's set to expire on the thirty first. So yes, but some of the or the cruise lines are you know, deciding to go ahead and cancel with November cruises as they still need more time to you know get things in order. Yeah, and I did see some news come across. I believe it was. Um, MSNBC, I saw this, or CNBC, actually, that cruise companies are actually bringing back 
um, some of their employees. So it's it's kind well, of that's an, a positive. It's kind of an indicator that it's it's coming back probably sooner rather than later. And again, they they all the cruise companies, you know, presented their safe set sale orders to the CDC and the government. So we'll see what happens. It's um, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it is going to be sooner rather than later. But at least um, as of right now, the deadline is October 31st. Well, and some positive news coming out of Cruise Lines, just speaking on that. So the Singapore Tourism Board has cleared the way for cruising to start in November with pilot cruises. So basically what they're doing is it's for Singapore residents only. Uh, You have to have a negative COVID test in order to go. It's round trip um, in Singapore. There's no ports. It's going to operate at a reduced capacity. And when I say no ports, so basically... Basically, it's just like a cruise to nowhere. A cruise to nowhere, yeah. Yep. And this is kind of a common thing in the cruise industry. Yeah, it is a common thing. And it's kind of like testing how they can safely resume over there. So who knows? Maybe I, that would be a good thing you know, for the U.S. to start as well. But uh, Dream Cruise Lines is starting that on November 6th. And then as of right now, World Caribbean is set to also have one um starting on the quantum of the seas in December. So we'll see if that goes, but I think that that, that I think that's a great thing. I would do it. Absolutely. One of the, some of the most fun cruising we've done is the cruise of nowhere. Yes. It's just fun. Like you just, you're on the boat. You actually enjoy the boat and you enjoy every ounce of it. Every restaurant, every lounge. I know I call it a (laughs) boat. You always correct me on that. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a ship. It's a big ship. You never, you've heard the lonely Island. I'm on a boat. Yes. <laughs> it's fun. It's, I don't think we need you to sing it. It's yeah. a ship. Okay. Yes. But you, you, you know what I mean. You can you can explore like every nook and cranny of the ship as opposed to a lot of cruise itineraries where you're on and off the ship so much. You yeah, really it's very don't, busy. You can't enjoy the ship that much. Right. You know, but I, it was really fun. We've done it a couple times. We're just like, wow, we don't have to get on and off. We can just literally every day enjoy this. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Super nice. I now, would definitely recommend it. Yeah. So what's next? What is next? Oh, you want me to go next? Okay. 94% of Americans are missing travel, according to Hilton. So Hilton came out with a study. 94% are missing travel. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. I was talking to one of my friends who lives in Connecticut yesterday, and she is like just dying to get out, even though... There's some quarantine requirements, I know, for Northeastern residents, but she's like, I just, I I feel like I'm being held hostage. I need to get out of here. I want to go somewhere. So I think that that is definitely pretty common, I would say, everywhere. People just want to get out, do something fun, change of scenery, let your mind go to waste, you know, don't think about anything going on in the world. And I definitely agree. I mean, I'm wondering... Where, what's going on with the other 6%? Like, why is this not 100%? Maybe they don't travel? Maybe they I don't click know. the wrong button on the survey or something, because I'm like, oh, wow, if you don't miss travel, that is crazy. Yeah. You haven't booked a trip with Pinyak Travel before, that's for sure, because we'll, we'll make you miss it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely make you miss it, that's for sure. Yeah, so that's interesting. There's been a lot of good... So that was an, not an interesting data point, but also, too, another study done here, um, it recently came out 81% of North American travelers will fly again in the next six months and actually 69% of global travelers plan to fly internationally in the next six months. Wow. So that's very interesting. And as- when, and just to note travelers, so that means that people that regularly, regularly do travel. travel. Yeah. yeah. This isn't 81% of all of North America plan to fly in the next six months. Right. This is 81% of people that travel that have traveled once a year or or take travel on a regular basis will travel or plan to fly in the next six months so this is in more regards to flying yes and then 69 percent of all global travelers so people that travel on a regular basis globally they plan to fly internationally in the next six months so it shows that there's a ton of optimism right now yes the more that this information comes out these numbers none of these numbers surprise me um, I think it's really good for the industry. One last data point I do want to share, too. We, we've been updating the TSA screening numbers here in America. So um, yesterday, which was October 11th, um, TSA screened 984,000 travelers. So we're getting close to a million. We're getting close to that million number. That is the biggest number since the pandemic hit. Um, so what, like since I guess February probably? Yeah, pretty much since February. That is the largest daily total since February. To put it in perspective, this time last year, October 11th, 2019, TSA screened 2.6 million. Wow. So 
we're getting close to a million. And then also, too, I did read on, on similar lines of these studies that um, one in three people haven't changed their travel plans. So all that data kind of makes sense if we're, we're close to a third here when you're looking at 980,000 versus 2.6. Yeah. It sounds like people are still traveling. So that's, you know, that's actually, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we're about it's to, positive. we're about to hit a million. Um, you know, I really think, and I've said it before that, that testing is the key. If we can get rapid results, you know, when you have it, where you have it, who has it, then you can control this thing and it kind of opens up the door for everything. Right. I mean, it, it really does. So a lot of good optimistic data coming out. You feel it too, because you, you're, you've actually been hit with a lot more requests lately, which is really good. Yes. Yeah. Over the last few weeks, we've definitely had a lot more people reaching out and quote requests. So it's definitely a positive spin. So especially considering just speaking on the airlines. So a report came out that U.S. airlines lost $12 billion in the second quarter of this year, which obviously is the most in history that they've ever lost. And Third quarter is probably going to be something similar, but it's nice to see that TSA numbers are coming back. So that means, you know, hopefully the U.S. airlines can get some help and they can rehire all the people that have unfortunately lost their jobs due to this. So, yeah. And if TSA is screening close to a million people right now, that I mean, that bodes really well. Now, now I read some stuff about holiday travel because there's been a lot of polling done and surveys done on holiday travel and those numbers are the early data coming in is it's skewing lower so you have obviously less people are planning to travel for the holidays like they did in 2019 you're gonna have oh, less right. in 2020 that's to be expected but what i'm really curious to see is when the holidays hit if we continue this trend here in north america or really the united states what that tsa data looks like day-to-day average versus 2019 it's yeah it'll be very interesting to see exactly how many people will hold off on traveling because i think about states that have stayed somewhat locked down like california new york you have some states that still have some pretty strict restrictions on traveling i wonder when it comes to the holidays are i mean there's a lot of people that haven't seen their family in so long yeah that missed their summer trip or didn't go home for the summer spring break or what have you and the holidays are here and numbers are low. I'm very curious to see how many actually travel in 2019 versus 2020, I should say. Yeah, that would definitely, that'll be some, an interesting fact. So I think it's going to be higher than we, I think it's going to be higher than people think. I, I think so too. Just as long as because, we trend, as long as we keep trending in this direction. Yeah. And just because the demand for travels is, you know, increasing. So I think that it definitely will be, um, higher than we expect so now also speaking on airlines united airlines has announced plans to restart service on close to 30 international routes starting in november so that's a that's a huge positive coming out of there too yeah that's big news speaking of united too they are actually resuming flights on november 7th to curacao curacao is reopening its borders um, starting on November 1st, and it's only reopening to limited states. Uh, it looks like right now it's New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, and you have to have a 72-hour PCR test. And what they're doing, and I think more local or more islands and destinations need to get on board with this, but you submit your PCR test online. There are a lot that you do have to do that. Like yeah. you, In St. Lucia, you have to email your results. And I think that's good because then like, I feel like if it's handled at the airport, it just gets a little messy. Yeah. It creates and, lines and stuff. And it's like, okay, we're kind of defeating the purpose here, right? You know what I mean? Oh, right. And just speaking real quick on that, Jamaica has changed their protocols for injury where you no longer have to upload your test results as a requirement. They just started that for travelers arriving October 10th. So starting this past Saturday, but you used to have to upload them, but you no longer do. You still have to you know, do the same travel authorization and all of that and take the COVID test, but you don't have to wait on your COVID test and upload those results. So just a little point there. Yeah. And that's, and I, as long as you have the option to do it, I think that's great because I think just being able to bypass it at the airport right now, no, before your travel tip, if I have the option to upload online, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think it'll help you kind of expedite through customs. All right, what you got next? Well, Hawaii was supposed to open officially for tourism this, this has week, been a back and, forth and this thing. has been yes, this it is, is changing by the hour with Hawaii. Well, it just it changes 
every week. I mean, they're like, we're going to open on July 1st, August 1st, August 15th, September 1st. We have the hotel October zone. 1st. We have a bubble. We have trackers. October 15th. <laughs> and it's looking like that it's not going to open as planned on October 15th. Now they're saying, and this is as of Monday, October 12th. So again, this could change in the next few days, but they are saying it looks like only Oahu will open. So you might still be able to go, you hang out in Waikiki, you they'll have the negative COVID test requirement, but the other islands are saying they are not expected to reopen as planned. And then one interesting feat though, or little piece of information is they are saying that they're preparing for up to 8,000 tourists a day whenever they do reopen because the demand is so, so high and people, all their flights have been, you know, our trips have been pushed back. And so that's what they're expecting. I can see that. Yeah. Because it's a domestic destination for a lot of Americans. Right. Yeah, and I know it's popular you know, for people from Japan and other Asian destinations, um, but it, yeah, that's what they're expecting, yeah. seeing 8,000 visitors per day. I wonder, we should look up how that compares to like pre, pre-numbers. pre Right. Like is 8,000 low for them, but it sounds a lot for the small island islands group of well, islands. Well, and you know, when you just think right now, like 8,000 people a day, you yeah, know, that's a lot. That many flights getting to Hawaii? I mean, it's... I guess it's possible. I mean, if it's you're, definitely if, possible. If they open it up, flights will go there, I think. Oh, yeah, because I think, uh, obviously, everybody, who doesn't want to go to Hawaii, so. I mean, it's unbelievable. It is like, it is, it is like this Pacific gem that just happens to be part of the United States, which is great. Yeah, no, which is really awesome. neat. Now, in news, speaking on Sandals Resorts and Beaches Resorts, because as you know, if you've been a longtime listener to the show, we do love their resorts. Um, they do have an insurance offer that has come out where it's for new bookings only, but your travel insurance is free and included really? with your booking. Yes. So kind Smart. of, yeah, kind of another piece of encouragement, you know, to get people to book and travel again. Um, but you have to book by December 31st and travel by May. 31st of next year so kind of a short window but it's still a great offer in my opinion you know looking at their insurance though it can be very confusing and sometimes I, I think that they don't highlight this enough but when they do have cancel for any reason insurance but to them their cancel for any reason insurance means you can cancel up until you know at any point um, and you'll get if it's Within 30 days of travel, though, if it's not a covered reason, so if it's not like a medical reason, death in the family, something like that, then you'll have the full value of your trip in the form of a voucher to use at a later date. Gotcha. So if you cancel within 30 days and it's not a covered reason, so they right. have actually covered reasons in the in the 30 day window. Yes. So medical so you're reason, about to death in the family. 30 days. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So the any reason portion does it only applies up into 30 days. Really up date. until 30 days. Yeah. Then you have a few reasons that you can still get your money back. Yeah. And if you're outside of those few reasons, you get a credit. You get a credit. Back. To travel within one year. And Perfect. So no matter what, outside of 30 days, if you're outside of 30 days of your trip, you can get your money back. Yes, but it does not give you your money back on the air. Of, it, well, of course. Yeah. Right. Just now, if, if yeah. it's a covered reason, like medical reason, death in the family, something like that, then you could use that to file a claim and get your money back on the air. But I feel like they advertise cancel for any reason insurance and they don't like... It, it's it's not very clear. You have to read the fine print. And yeah. so that's one thing I just want to make sure to mention on that. Yeah, travel insurance is one of those things you really got to understand what you're getting and understand the policy, what what's covered, what's not. I think it'd be good for us to do a refresher on travel insurance for an upcoming episode just because right now, more so than ever, more people are utilizing it. I think it's a great thing. I think you should never travel without it. And what's really disappointing is I actually saw an article, and I won't mention from what media company it came from, but it actually was talking about how uh, too many people buy travel insurance and how they can save money on it and go, and I'm like, I kind of was like, that's really reckless information because yeah, it's already is. a fairly complicated topic, but to just make the broad statement that you're spending too much on travel insurance and you can either not have it or just save the money and go with a cheaper insurance policy. It's like, 
like everything, you always get what you pay for. And when you travel, depending on where you're going, you might want to be covered, especially what's going on in your life. If you have like maybe yeah. an ill family member, I mean, it's just. I don't know. I, I didn't, well, I didn't even, get good vibes. No, and you know, even if you're okay with being out the money on your trip, you don't want to insure it. And I know for a lot of people, a lot of insurance is based on age and cost of trip. So depending yeah. on your age and the cost of your trip, the insurance premiums can get fairly high. Um, but you can also at least just have the opportunity to just give yourself insurance while you're traveling that would cover you, you know, if something came up like medical wise, you know, when you're there and you had to, you know, go to a hospital and be seen or if like you needed to be medically evacuated back to the United States, a lot of insurance policies will cover that and you can buy policies just for that. And so if you're okay with being out, you know, the money on your trip for cancellation, then that's fine. But at least if you're going to go, then it, you know, do some form of insurance to cover you while you're there. Yeah. Your health insurance does not always cover you in foreign countries. No. And that's a very reckless statement that they would say that you should save money and not do it. That's the thing. It's like, well, you, of course you can save money and not do it. You can also say would you also and not travel, you know. Those. Oh, right, but would you also say, you know, like I remember this happened very very sad circumstances a couple of years ago. Um people were on a boat in the Exuma Bahamas and it, you know, like caught on fire, there was an explosion well, or something. This, yeah. And you know, people were injured. Well, if you didn't have insurance, like travel insurance, when you're there, you're going to be responsible for all of those medical bills. Yeah, until there's some sort of like lawsuit settled. Right. Like you're, you're still going to have to that burden for sure. Yeah. Or if you, you know, ended up from there needing to be medically evacuated back to the States, well, and that's going to cost you like $50,000. Yeah. Well, I think I would have rather spent $100 on insurance so I was covered. Exactly. It's a no brainer for us, but I get it. I mean, if you don't want to. It's personal choice, but we always recommend it. Yeah, no, I definitely I mean, you, recommend it's it. One the, it's one of those things. It's, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Yes, that is very true. Yeah, we will a definitely have to do. Told me that once. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do a refresher on that. So sorry to get off on a little tangent on insurance, but yep. it is very important. We'll save the rest for another podcast episode coming up yes. very soon. We'll do one very soon on that. Yes, I agree. Because more people are going to use it now that COVID's here. Yes. So, again, speaking to Sandals and Beaches Resorts, so Beaches, Turks, and Caicos was set to open on October 14th, and unfortunately, they have changed that date and pushed it back to November 18th, so hopefully still in time, you know, to get all the Thanksgiving travelers you know, down there, but and holiday travelers, but they have pushed that opening back to November 18th. So, you know, if you were planning on going, and um, you know, between then, unfortunately, you'll have to wait. Oh, you're gonna have to di- have to have dinner with the family. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they're gonna I be just, open make, on Thanksgiving. I know. I make all these jokes, but I I have no problem. Like people probably think, God, George always talks about avoiding family dinners. Yeah, I, I have no problem. With either side of our families. (laughs) I I actually enjoy it. I just think it's funny. I mean, I actually asked you if you wanted to change a trip that we have next month so we could be gone over Thanksgiving. But Hey, don't tempt me with a good time. uh, Yeah. I mean, you said no, so. I didn't say no. Well, you don't want to take the COVID test. Oh, I don't want to do the COVID test again. Yeah, I did it once. I'll I'll do the the nasal swab, not the rotor rooter man plumbing system all the way back to the... Yeah. Well, that's what it requires right now. So looks like we're sticking with our original plan. I'm getting desperate. I'll probably do it. Okay. (laughs) Well, I'm ready ready to get out again. So in positive news for Mexico, as you know... And we've been talking a lot about Mexico just because it is one of the few places that you can travel right now and you don't have to have the COVID test in order to go. There's great, great, great pricing. And so one of the or of the three hot tourist spots there, you have uh, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo and Cancun. Puerto Vallarta is leading the COVID recovery with the highest hotel occupancy in Mexico. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so That's great. last month they had 33.9% occupancy of their hotels, which is still low, but it it's definitely a positive number because, you know, back in say 
June, July, when Mexico reopened, these numbers were very, very low, like yeah. 10%. Um, Cabo was behind that at 25.8%. And okay. then Cancun, Riviera Maya area, 25.4% hotel occupancy. That's awesome. But, you know, it also just highlights that now is a good time to go there because you're not going to be around crowds. So, you know, if you do have COVID concerns, then you know, you're, you're socially distancing for sure when you're there services have been outstanding you know all the times that we've been and we're going back next month so i don't think there's a better time to go than now yeah you're around less people at some of these all-inclusive resorts or just adults only resorts there for a week than you are in america or at home or anywhere else like there's just hardly any people there and it's great and again, like we felt super safe and it may, I, I just love Mexico because they, I do too. they almost always deliver great service. Yeah. The food quality there compared to other resorts on average, if you're looking at all inclusives, I think you can find gems for a little better food. Well, and you can, you can pay less for those gems oh, it's a because much, yes. your money goes a lot farther there. So, you know, you can get into a really great all-inclusive resort you know, for a great price. Absolutely, yeah. It's no. an amazing value. It's a perfect time to go because that amazing value is even better right now Yeah, because COVID happened. So you're getting a better deal than you normally. It's already a great value. You're getting a better value. The low occupancy restrictions they have, so you're going to feel like you're isolated from everybody, and you're going to get a great vacation out of it with great service. Mexico almost never disappoints when it comes to service. and and But again... That being said, there's a wide variety of resorts in Mexico. It's a huge country with a lot of tourist spots. And so you're going to get a wide range if you look up all-inclusives in Mexico. You want to make sure you're picking out the gems with the best value, and those can be hard to find. That's why it's important to book with a Pena travel agent or there we go. just you yourself. Book with and just to give you a quick idea on how good some of these prices have been, and this is seven nights including airfare. This is round trip from Charlotte. So, you know, it could vary depending on where you're coming from. But at a few of our favorite resorts there, so Unigo, which we just went to in June, um, two or seven nights there, total for two people with airfare, airport transportation, and cancel for any reason travel insurance, 35.29. Wow. And that's for seven nights. And And you get the cancel for any reason insurance with that? Yes. And Secrets the Vine, which is in the hotel zone of Cancun. So if you want to be right in the middle of all the action, 3150 mm. is what it's starting out at. And then if you want a little bit different experience, Breathless Riviera Cancun, which is like a more lively party, upbeat atmosphere yeah. type resort. So you can get in there. They've been having some amazing sales. 2776 total for seven nights with your airfare, airport transportation, this is all inclusive. So it's all your meals, all your drinks. I mean, it's an incredible deal. I mean, that is insane. Yeah. I mean, usually for seven nights, I would expect at least about $1,000 more on yeah. all of those. I was going to say, you're looking at like 30 to 5 to 40% off, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's some really good deals. So definitely, it's a great time to go. Yeah. And then also, you know, you have the cancel for any reason insurance of something happens or you become uncomfortable. You've got that protection. I think it's so, so, so important to have that. Yes. And... Depending on, I do want to say on my cancel for any reason insurance, it kind of depends on the package that you book, whether or not, you know, if we can add it on, what the price will be. But generally speaking, it's about $45 a person, but I don't have it. It's not offered over holiday travel. So just want to, well, it is, but not at that price. (laughs) We're talking a lot of insurance. You're going to have, we're going to have the whole episode backloaded on this episode. Okay. Well, in other news, so my last little point, this is kind of a a fun piece. So if you like natural light beer. Sign me up. (laughs) I mean, you know, who didn't drink that in college or whatever? Yeah, I don't drink it anymore. Yeah. (laughs) So I've I've acquired a more complex palate for beer. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. So natural light is having a natty light 
contests. It's like Natty Light Flight. So you can have a flight to nowhere called the Natural Flight for you and three of your friends. It's focused on college kids over 21, this contest is. Um, But you can get a flight to nowhere on a private jet that includes TVs, gaming, food, and all you can drink natural light. I believe the contest, you just have to talk about what you would name your natural flight and why. What would I name the flight? Yeah. That's the whole contest? And why? Like the like the name of the plane or just the trip in general? It's like, it just said natural flight. So yeah, I guess the plane and what would you name your experience? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I like that better than question of the day. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I would have to think hard about that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to submit to win, I'm going to have to think really hard about that. That's challenging. Yes. But... Oh. You and three of your friends could win a private jet experience with all you can drink natural light. So check it out. <laughs> I'm gonna send that to <laughs> if some that of my buddies. Still, I'm gonna send it to some of my buddies that still live the college lifestyle. <laughs> Say maybe Evan would like that. <laughs> <laughs> send it to the boys. There you go. As long as they include me, obviously. Yes. Yeah, but I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. Well, hey, we, we got we have a few more minutes here. What's your trip of the week? Trip of the week. Well, last week, um, it was big news. Hurricane Delta all of a sudden just like quadrupled in size and was heading or I guess in strength and was heading directly towards Cancun. And I had people set to arrive there on the day that it was hitting. So we had to last minute the day before get them moved around, switched over because they still wanted to go on vacation. They did not care. They wanted to go somewhere. And so we got them switched and it was under 24 hours before they were supposed to leave. And we got them moved over to Punta Cana. Love so it. they still, and I touched base with them today. Uh, they were happy. They had a great trip. And yeah, I'm just happy they were still able to travel somewhere. That is awesome. Yeah. Because I mean, you never know. And, and that Hurricane Delta did, it came out of nowhere, it feels like. I feel like everyone was kind of watching it. And then all of a sudden it, it was like international. Well, over, yeah, overnight it was like, oh, Category 4 <laughs> going straight what? towards Cancun. In the world. It's like, no, but it, it, ended up it not being so bad there you know you obviously had like the normal down trees and some flooding and some damage but it wasn't nearly as bad as it could be so that's definitely a blessing it could have been a lot worse in true 2020 fashion right it changed overnight to pretty much one of the most deadliest hurricanes ever well (laughs) yeah that's what what they were anticipating yes yeah. (laughs) yeah anyways question of the day it's halloween it's halloween you can feel it in the air you're seeing all the it's spooky. It's not Halloween, but no, no, no. It's it, it's the Halloween time of year. You're seeing all the spooky stuff around the neighborhoods. Every store you go in, there's candy everywhere to buy, and you've got Halloween decorations out. So, question of the day geared around Halloween. Okay. What is your favorite Halloween costume? Favorite Halloween costume, like for either that you've worn who? or that you've ever seen. Um, I've got mine. You want me to go first? Sure. I I really love, and I will buy one of these one day just to have at the house. Is the inflatable Tyrannosaurus Rex the T Rex? Oh yeah, those are the hilarious. T Rex. Yeah. I want one of those so freaking bad. I that would actually be that's my favorite. Hilarious. I see people like doing stuff in that. I'm like. I just, I laugh. I can't not laugh. We like, might actually I, have to order one now. I just want to walk around in public in one of those. <laughs> yeah, we while. might actually have to order one of those. I mean, yeah. that is so freaking cool. Yeah, those are hilarious. I would say that's definitely the funniest that I, you know, I just laugh every time I see someone in one of those, just, just like running down so the street. Goofy, but real. And it's yeah. like. You can bob the head up and down. It's just hilarious. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think it's hilarious. Um, I don't know if it's fully appropriate <laughs> to say what our, uh, I mean, what my a, favorite it's a Halloween costume is we've that worn. we have worn. Oh yeah, we've we've worn. <laughs> some. It's not that inappropriate. Well, you know, very, I, it, it could be adult, sen- it's an adult, it's party. adult, and it could be sensitive, but it's really was just meant it's just to comical. be lighthearted, yeah, and comical. So a few years ago, um, 
we dressed up as now that we went to an adult Halloween we went party. to it was an adult only Halloween party it was at someone's house this was not something we wore on Halloween <laughs> giving out candy to kids but yeah we, yeah we did we just need to say because people are probably like oh my god what are they about to say oh yeah no but we he, did we did Bill Bill, Bill Clinton. Clinton and Monica Lewinsky yeah. so I was Monica Lewinsky and George was Bill Clinton just as a I mean it was a joke and yeah. it, we have really <laughs> funny pictures though of like yeah honestly the outfits looked I mean I look like Bill. Like the wig, yeah. I had the wig and the eyebrow paint and all that stuff. Oh yeah, no, it was it was good. I mean, it was just a good laugh. It was for good laughs. I mean, that yeah. was like such an international story back then, and now they have adult Halloween outfits you can buy. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't know. We haven't decided what we're going to be this year. I don't know. We haven't. I don't think we've dressed up since since then. No, we definitely won't be Bill and Monica. No, no, because we're going to be giving out candy and stuff. So yeah, maybe I'll get the inflatable dinosaur. I, I it'll think, protect me from COVID too. So I'll actually, be, yeah, I'll be in my bubble. There you go. <laughs> I, I like that idea. I think we should go order one now. Okay, Amazon. Let's go. <laughs> All right, that's the show, guys. We love you so much. Thank you so much. We love you guys. If you want any more information, especially around travel insurance, please go over to our website. Request a quote. You don't have to put a quote, and you can put in information. It just goes right to Janet. And um, we love hearing from you guys. If you like the show, we'd love a five-star review. It means so much to us um, if you're really enjoying the show. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, we'd love a subscribe too. And hope everyone has a great week. And we'll see you. See you next time. Next time.